I'm Meherine Kaur. I'm part of Saladep, and I'm here with... Nardeep Kermi, uh, an actor, writer, and director. So, we're going to start off straight off with your debut film, The the Land of Gold. And obviously, we all have known that it has received critical acclaim, and it's also um, on HBO, which is huge. That's crazy. Yeah. And I wanted it's to just... It is crazy. <laughs> And I just wanted to start off with, can you share like the journey of bringing this project to life from yeah. A to Z? What happened? How was it significant to you? How is it propelling you forward? Yeah, why is it significant to me? It was my first film. Um, <laughs> it was an amazing experience. You know, I had been trying to make my first film for a long time. And it's, it's really hard to get anything made, let alone like a first feature film without, you know, a Punjabi dad and, you know, young Mexican woman who's trying to find family. So uh, the journey for Land of Gold really started in 2018. I started writing the script, thinking about it, um, very much in response to what was happening politically in the world, of, you know, at the time and still happening, um, child separation at the border. It was, it was just really, really heartbreaking. And um, it broke my heart even more when I was speaking to South Asian immigrants and like family members, family friends and things like that, who were having a, a a really unempathetic response to this. I started hearing a lot of sort of conservative rhetoric about, oh, they should wait in line, there's a right way to do this. And it, it just didn't ring true to me because I'm like, we're all immigrants here. Like we came here for specific reasons and you know, they're doing it their way. And is there a right reason to separate children from their family? There's no right reason to do that, right? They'll never be good. So I felt compelled to write this story. Um, also in my research, I realized that there was this rich untapped history that was unexplored between the Punjabi community and the Mexican community dating back to the late 1800s, early 1900s. And uh, that's like for a longer project that, that's specifically about that community. But I was so inspired by this share of cultures and the fact that these two communities who were uh, oppressed and suppressed found each other in this time period during the, during the Asian Exclusion Act that they um, bonded and, and thrived from that, right? So that was kind of like the ingredients that started making Land of Gold a reality. Um, and then uh, in 2020, is it my rear? Yeah, 2020, uh, we were very fortunate. We won a massive grant uh, called the AT&T Untold Stories mm -hmm. Program. And it was at the Tribeca Festival in New York and we won a million dollars to make Land of Gold. We won that in June and then that evening, we started producing the movie like right away. And we had about 11 months start to finish to make the film, because uh, we had to premiere at the Tribeca Festival in 2021. So the film premiered on the festival circuit at Tribeca in 2021. And then we enjoyed a year long festival circuit, won a bunch of awards, it was great. And the movie premiered on uh, HBO Max in May of 2023. I'm getting my dates wrong. <laughs> we premiered at Tribeca, we, we won the Untold Stories program in 2021. I wrote the script in 2019, and we premiered at Tribeca in 2022. This is going to be impossible for anyone to edit now. Uh, <laughs> but now it's on Max. It came out on Max in, in uh, May of 2023, and here we are. Wow. Yeah. That's definitely really exciting. And was that your big push into directing and filmmaking, or was it something that was very, very prior to that? Yeah, you know, I've been making movies since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I was always loved performing and making people laugh. I realized when I was a kid that if I made people laugh, they wouldn't want to beat me up so much. So, uh, yeah, yeah. So I, I should laugh or like. You should laugh. <laughs> no, with you. or both. You could be a mix. Okay. Yeah, sympathy is great. Okay. Uh, no, so I started making people laugh and performing, and that led to you know, performing in community theater, on stage, in like the school musicals and stuff like that. But I realized that there was a moment where I needed to control the narrative a little bit because I wasn't seeing our stories being put out there, my story being put out there. So I invested in a video camera. We had a class in school. We were very fortunate at called Video Applications. And it married my love of photography and performance with filmmaking. And I started making stupid shorts in high school, like really dumb short mm -hmm. films. But that led me to go to film school um, and then, you know, been making stuff ever since. That is crazy. So generally, do your movies um, align very much with your narrative or any themes that come up in your in your stories or in your films that are from your personal life, from the personal yeah. stories? You know, Land of Gold uh, is very much inspired by mm -hmm. my family. It's not my family, but <laughs> yeah. there's definitely things that bleed through, right? Um, I don't 
know of any filmmaker or storyteller who doesn't put something of themselves in the yeah. stories because they have to make it personal and, and, and intimate, right? Mm -hmm. So whether it's Land of Gold or these other projects I'm working on, they all have elements of me, either in the way I was brought up or the characters I'm writing. Maybe they're go they've gone through something I've gone through or a loved one's gone through or a friend or something. So yeah, there's always a part of me in everything, sometimes a bigger part mm -hmm. and sometimes maybe a smaller part, you know? Um, but I think that's what lends the authenticity and the honesty and the vulnerability to the film, whether it's a comedy or a drama, you really feel that there's, the, the person who's telling the story understands what they're saying, mm -hmm. what they're telling, right? And that's the whole point of storytelling in general. That's the whole point. You don't want to see some, you know, dunderhead make a movie <laughs> about something they don't know, because what the hell do they have to say about the thing, right? But if someone, you know, land of gold, uh, I've never, you know, I've never dealt with someone who has been separated from the family, but I've taught undocumented children in theater programs. You know, I have a family that faces addiction. Um, you know, I have a family that struggles with their faith. Um, so those elements go into that uh, and then, you know, make it feel real. So what kinds of themes or elements do you want to have very prominent in your kinds of films? Oh, man. <laughs> do I want or do they just happen? Um, I don't know if we get to choose. I don't think we get to choose what we we want to talk about. I think that just happens, you know, by nature of what we're interested in. I, I think I'm very interested in intergenerational trauma and how trauma is passed down from family member to family member, uh, especially from immigrant communities. I'm interested in uh, how people connect and communicate, specifically culture to culture. Uh, you know, a lot of the South Asian narrative, a lot of what's happening right now, at least in the South Asian storytelling community I'm seeing is this struggle of what is our narrative? Mm. What are we doing, right? What is what is our dias diasporic narrative that's away from arranged marriage yeah. and like all that stuff, right? And for me and my experience, maybe this is just unique to me, but I find this interesting. It's we're in a, a, a beautiful heterogeneous society. So we relate to other people based off of other people. It's not just insular. Mm -hmm. Like we relate to black folks, we relate to Latino folks, white folks, right? So I'm really curious in exploring what is that communication between Atlanta Gold does that, the other work I'm working on does that. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm, you know, so what is the, what are those binding forces that actually unite us and don't separate us? Um, and then, you know, those are, and then explorations of faith, which is in Land of Gold as well. I think I'm really curious as to whether it's Sikhi or something else. How do people incorporate faith into their life or reject it? And how does it inform the choices that they make? Um, because there is this, you know, unknowing force, whatever you call that. We, there's no way to grasp the universe that we live in. And I'm really curious how people reconcile that, you know? So I feel like I'm constantly trying to reconcile that myself. That's yeah. very cool. So going back to like how people reconcile that compared to what you've seen in your past works, what were the kinds of reactions or like views that you've gotten from people looking into your work? Yeah, um, you know, I know my work is doing the thing I want it to do when it creates a really interesting conversation afterwards. So. Uh, I made a short film that did the festival circuit prior mm -hmm. to Land of Gold called yeah. Bug. And that went international on the festival circuit and, and it's available on YouTube if you want to see it too. Mm -hmm. uh, that created a really beautiful conversation. Um, it's about a, uh, a sick man on the 4th of July making a decision that he makes because he thinks it's going to protect his family. And it's a tragic decision. And after the film screened, we, it, it, for people who weren't uh, uh, familiar with Sikhism, they were shocked that this man would make this decision and they were really curious as to like why he was doing these things, why they're important to him. So it allowed a conversation to explain the faith as opposed to the film explaining the faith because they were just watching this father try and take care of his family. For Sikhs, it was really interesting. Younger folks really understood what I was trying to do yeah. and saying like what he eventually does is a real tragedy. But older folks, couldn't see past the imagery and they couldn't, and not everybody, but like there were conversations of people not understanding why I wasn't portraying a super positive, proud view of this sick man, you know? So that was an interesting conversation. And Land of Gold has done that as well because the main character 
has rejected his faith, but he's literally living Siki in his everyday life, and he, he doesn't even realize. And mom, like, is like, "Hey, you're doing what Guru Nanak <laughs> taught us to do, and you, you don't do any of this stuff, right?" Mm -hmm. And then exploring his dad's relationship to his faith and how he kind of crumbled and why this trauma exists in the family. Like, it, it's created conversations for, again, people who are not familiar with this stuff to have a conversation about what is this and what does it mean. But then also for people of the faith to really reconcile of like, oh, right, you know, this is a real depiction of, of pain and, and trauma and, and, and moving through that. And I think that's ultimately where the conversations go is that there's always hope and that if we come together, we can kind of move past these things. So I think I answered your question. It's <laughs> kind of rambling, but yeah. No, that, that totally, I, I completely understand in the way of people's reactions because these kinds of conversations aren't very normalized or they're not very, no. it's very, um, not an immigrant family, <laughs> it's not in Daisy families. No, we don't talk about nothing. No, it's you all know? behind doors or, you know, you yeah. close the door about it. You there's bond. no door. No, there's no door. It's in a trunk. <laughs> so it's in a trunk the in the rug. closet. <laughs> yeah, the, the rug yeah. is on top of the trunk. You're like, why is the rug on top of the trunk? And it just keeps driving backwards. And it's in a car. We're going yep. first. And you're like, great. Okay. I'll never get it's to the It's just falling back. It's just, so, like, yeah. Yeah. So like, let's have these conversations out in the open. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about, you know, um, in one of the panels earlier yeah. talked about uh, alcoholism and addiction in the family. This movie talks about that pretty openly, right? Like, mm -hmm. let's talk about these things we don't talk about and and maybe through watching someone else struggle through it in film you can have a catharsis and maybe you know work through it yourself yeah, yeah. okay well is that good around any message yes yeah um but then also you... when you're doing that if you want us to talk about any upcoming like what we're working on oh gosh yeah uh <laughs> yeah message for the kids out there uh, keep making stuff you know what we really need to see is your perspective on the world and how you see things and how you think can be better, uh, how you think things can be better. So please keep making stuff. It doesn't mean you gotta have the fancy equipment, like you don't need these fancy cameras here. You can just pick up your phone and shoot. I mean, the new iPhones can shoot ProRes and Log, so you can learn how to do all this beautiful stuff like that. So make stuff because I wanna see it. The world needs to see your perspective. Um, and uh, what's coming up next for me? Well, I am working on a really cool TV show which is about all I can say, which is an adaptation of a really big Japanese property that feels very LA tech lingo speak. And, <laughs> I, and I know that, but that's about all I can say about it. But you know, it, later this year, that'll hopefully be announced. And i um, working on uh, two features, which I'm very excited about. Um, one of which does explore the uh, what is it to be brown in a black and white America? interesting conversations that could happen there too so stay tuned and he's very excited to go back to la itching to get all the creative juices out you know i tied my hair up it's because <laughs> if i don't tie it up all the ideas are going to come all spilling ideas. out so i got to keep it i got to keep it intact can't leak them out yet yeah <laughs> <laughs> thank you so yeah. much for your time thanks for having me thank, thank you. you please subscribe share and like this video to support us